I mean, you are being suspicious. Plus, you knew I saw a roach. That was weird. Hello, everyone. It's time. You guys, you guys ready for some some fucking doors? Door time, door time, door time. Um, anyways, yeah. Let's get back into this. Last time from Clover's ending, we got a key to save Fee and Kay. Yeah. Shit. They're not here. Maybe they did go through the door, like Kay said. With Quark's bracelet? Or... Or what? Oh, come on, man. You better not give me that maybe they're already dead crap. Got enough of it from Dio. You've got to be kidding me. This isn't funny, Fee. If you're right, then you, Kay, Quark, and I are the only people still alive in here. Hey, lay off. No. I want to believe they're alive, too. But... We heard a noise and turned. Oh, you did yard work? Yard work. I apologize for keeping you. Welcome back for Doors, Catman. We actually haven't gotten into new content yet, but I like this little recap because I don't... It's been a while since we got to this ending. But now we have the unlock requirement. They're not gonna fucking die. Did you get Dia's bracelet? Well, technically, yes, but... Technically? Huh? Best you just see it. This is what I found in Dio's pod. Right. What? what the hell? I assume whoever murdered Dio did this. But why? There's no point. I can't say for sure, but if I were to guess... Deserved. Chromatic doors have opened. There's a piece of shit, so true. Five minutes remain until chromatic doors close. With the bracelet like this, I doubt we can get past the secondary door. That means Kay and I will... Oh no. Shit. You're, you're gonna... When the time comes, those three doors will automatically close. If anyone is left outside after they close, they'll... They'll be penalized. Penalized? I see. That's what they wanted. Whoever killed Dio wanted to use the game to kill me and Kay. That's why they broke the bracelet. I think so. It makes the most sense. How can you be so calm? In five minutes you're gonna be... be... Go on ahead, Sigma. You have those bracelets Kay gave you, right? You should be able to get through the secondary door with those. So just... Fuck that. You know I can't just ditch you guys like that. But if you stay here, you'll... You think I don't know that? But what kind of a monster am I if I just leave you here to die? Ugh. Damn it. This was bad. What was I gonna do? I needed to calm down. Just calm down. Calm down and think. There had to be a way to save them. There had... Esterase inhibitor. That means it's sort of an antidote for tubocurine. I knew it! Give it back. I found it so it's mine. Of course. The antidote. The antidote? It didn't have time to explain. 
I took off running toward the exit. Sigma, where are you going? <laughs> Stay here. I'll be right back. I bolted out of the warehouse toward the treatment room. Treatment center, which is what I almost said, but he said room. I think Dio put it in his pocket. Come on, come on, come on. We still have it. Sweat was pouring down my face, but I didn't bother to wipe it off. There wasn't time. I dug frantically through Dio's coat until... Ha! Found it. Oh. There's only one dose. The induction gun uses the whole bottle at once. Shit. I can't save both of them. One minute remains until chromatic doors close. One minute? Shit. I spun around and shot out of the treatment center. Gotta be kidding me. Oh dear. Sigma. And there was a sharp, quick pain in my wrist, barely even noticeable. I couldn't feel anything flowing into my veins, but I knew it was there. The first would be the anesthetic soper roll. I blinked, and my vision started to blur. When I tried to think, it felt like my mind had been stuffed with cotton. My legs began to wobble, then gave out entirely as I crumpled to the floor. Drugs! So true. No. I couldn't fall asleep. I had to give one of them the antidote before my bracelet injected me with tubucurine. With every ounce of strength I could muster, I forced my eyes back open. Kay and Fee laid limp on the floor in front of me. In my right hand, I could feel the injector gun with its precious cargo. I could only pull the trigger once. Who was I going to choose? B or K? No, what was I thinking? There was only one answer. V. I didn't even have a choice. After all, Kay's entire body was covered in impenetrable metal. I'm sorry, Kay. I summoned up as much energy as I could, and dragged myself toward V. After what felt like an eternity, I was finally within arm's reach. With no time to waste, I pressed the gun to her arm and pulled the trigger. I inducted you with the neostigmine. It's a type of chlorlinerstride inhibitor. It's the antidote to the muscle relaxant. Why did you pick me? Because I can't use the injection gun on K. It never get through the metal. Then why didn't you inject yourself? <laughs> I guess you've got a point. Honestly, it didn't even cross my mind. You're the biggest idiot on the planet. Yeah. Hey, come on. Is that any kind of thing to say to someone who's about to die? How about something more tender? No. Screw this. I don't want to live if it means being in debt to you. No goddamn way. I'm not gonna. 
Her words slurred and slowed, and her eyes fluttered closed. She wasn't dead, of course. I could hear the faint sound of her breathing, and see her chest rise and fall. Good. Faye's gonna be alright. But, okay. I looked over in his direction, and that was when I noticed it. Open. There's a hole in here, on the back of your head. Yeah, it looks like you insert something. It says open, so maybe if you put some kind of key in there. You could open up the suit and take the mask off. Wait, then he... But when could he have... It's empty. Yes. Was there something in there before? No, it was empty when I found it. But what if he'd lied? Could Kay have taken the key? How'd he gone and it didn't really matter anymore? What did matter was that Kay had been able to remove his armor. And he had. Holy shit. That, that would mean... Dio's killer is... I coxed as much strength as I coaxed as much strength as I could from my increasingly lethargic body, and crawled toward Kay. Kay, wake up! Come on, talk to me! I grabbed his shoulder and shook him until he finally shifted and spoke. Sigma. I just need to know one thing. Did you kill Dio? You weren't sleeping, were you? After I left, you took off your armor. You didn't want to go the same way I had, so you took the other door. After you went the long way around through the warehouse and the crew quarters, you headed for the elevator. I bumped into feet and we went back to the lounge to check on you. We saw you. We saw your armor, I guess. By then you would have been out of it. While we were in the lounge, you went to the treatment room and killed Dio. You must have turned off the oxygen to his pod, although you probably didn't stick around to make sure he died. I'm betting you were in a hurry to get back before Fee and I noticed something was up. Once you got back to Foray, you needed us out of the lounge, so you made a noise in the hall to lure us out. And then you ran around and took the long way back to the lounge so you could enter through the rear door. Once you were there, you put your suit on again and waited for us. As soon as we found Dio's body, we did exactly what you'd expected. Okay, wake up! Something's happened! You pretended to wake up, very disoriented and confused. But what is it? Come on, Kay. I'm almost out of time. Did you kill Dio? Yes. Damn, that's so big brain, not gonna lie. Your reasoning is correct. I... I killed him. Why? Because I couldn't forgive him. He took the life of someone very important to me. Hmm. I couldn't... Who did he kill? The... The old woman. The old woman, who is Akane. What? She was like... Mother to me. Mm. She showed me how to see... How to see meaning in my life. Wait, are you saying... Yes, I am. She was the woman who came here when I was 18. 
Whoa, hold on. What do you mean, here? Sigma. Unfortunately, we are out of time. There's something I have to tell you. I made a promise that you would hear it. Do you understand? This is very important. This sounds like I need to grab my sheet of paper with the important stuff that I need to write down on it and... Where's my fucking pens? I have a pencil. I have like another pen, but it's not as nice. Um... You must pay attention. Paying attention. Cannot forget. Got it. Forgot. He wasn't making sense. I was about to die. How on earth would I be remembering anything for more than a few seconds? Don't worry about it, buddy. If you see a lion with two heads devouring the sun, mm -hmm. remember, remember these letters. Sorry, but that's just milk. Anyways. Milky Voli. This will open the second gate. <laughs> what the hell? Hey! Kay! Who told you to tell me this? No. Who are you? Show me. Show me who you really are. I grabbed a hold of Kay's mask and tore it off. What? No, that's... That's impossible. That face... It's... It's my face. I felt a sharp pain in my left wrist, and my body collapsed under ceremoniously. <laughs> the second drug. Curine. My vision began to blur, and my head felt unnaturally heavy. And the world faded away and my consciousness slipped down into the cold, dark waters of nothingness. Okay, so, Kay's father figure is definitely Zero Senior. Akane is... Kay's mother-like figure that isn't actually his mother. Like, I kind of figured, like, I remember when we were doing K's ending, it's like, oh, that kind of looks like the old lady. Um. But how does that play into her definitely being Akane? Hmm. But we're slowly but surely connecting all the dots, so that's cool. K ending. Through the looking glass. That That's, that's the name of his ending? Okay, sheesh. Okay, um, I don't think we have enough info yet for the set of endings here. I don't think so, because we're on to entering the password for the, like, the, the login information. I think that was more than just a password, right? Okay, Alice confirmed. <laughs> Oh, solve the mystery of the two-headed lion. Okay, wait. You need the idea too, I think. I think so too, but we might- it doesn't hurt to look. Okay, yeah, no. I guess for now we don't really have much of a choice except for to go into the next chromatic door set. And 
the very beginning. Because I don't have the unlock requirement for this here. And we don't have enough info for that one yet. Okay. So back here to the chromatic doors. And we're gonna go through a chromatic door that we haven't gone through yet. Um, Alice. I think I'd like to go with Alice and take the cyan door. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. Sure. That means Quark and I are getting paired with Luna. I don't have a problem with that. Miss Luna's nice. That's fine with me, too. We'll take the yellow door then, right? That means Clover and I will take the purple door with Tenmyoji. Oh, I wanted to go with Alice. Well, something wrong with me? <laughs> well, no, not wrong. Okay, what is it then? Well, you're really gonna make me say it? You're... old. What? Why, you... I'll have you know I'm as spry as I was when I was 20. Ten seconds remain until chromatic doors close. Nine, eight, seven. We don't have time for this. We need to go. You're getting an earful later, young lady. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Three, two, one, zero. Tenmyoji does indeed have a lot of energy. I mean, that's what happens when you're Junpei, I guess. Chromatic doors closing. Crew quarter time. Is this just a hallway? The door said crew quarters? People probably stayed here. There are numbers on each of the doors. So they're room one, room two, room three, etc. Hmm. I guess you might as well start by opening one of them. Looks like we were right. This place really says someone lives here. Yeah, there's a bed and everything. Yep. But who would be spending the night in a place like this? It looks too plain to be a guest room. This room probably belonged to a laborer, or some kind of blue-collar worker. I guess this is where the people who worked here stayed. But what were they working on? Beats me. Why would I know that anyway? I don't know what this place is any more than you do. Your guess is as good as mine. Do you think it might be a coal mine? Hmm. Or maybe they're drilling for oil or something. I don't know about that. And what do you think this hole leads to? You want to go have a look? Yeah. No luck. It looks like it's locked. No getting out of the hallway until we can unlock it then, I guess. Looks that way. Alright. Let's split up and have a look at these cabins. Zero told us there are key cards we can use to open the AB rooms. Maybe there's one hidden in here somewhere. So, let's get started. With a nod, Fee and Alice both moved off to start looking. Fee had to room 4 and Alice went to room 2. Start with room one. Huh? What's this? There's a human silhouette drawn in white on the bed. The area where the left knee would be has been ripped out. I wonder if that means anything. Probably. Don't know what yet, though. Hmm. 
And what's this? I don't think it's a stain. Triangle, a leaf thing, and another triangle. What's that thing on the right? Looks like the silhouette of a fox. I think that's technically called a chevron, but... And there's a book on top of the desk. Let me see here. It's called... How the hell do I pronounce that? Schrodinger's Cat? And there's a kitty on the cover. Isn't that just precious? Whoops, there it goes. Still can't help talking like a cat when I talk about a cat. Let's see what's in here. Looks like all sorts of science-y stuff. I have no idea what any of this means. I don't think this is part of any kind of puzzle, so I'm just gonna leave it here. Is that why it disappeared? Hmm. Okay, though. Um... Damn. It's locked. I think this panel here is what unlocks it, but nothing happens when you push the buttons. Is that a keyhole on the top there? Hmm. I probably need a key or something. Alright. Um... Oh. Hang on. Oh, someone left a book about cats sitting out. Okay. The phone. Is it connected? The phone. There's a set of three connected panels behind the phone. It looks sort of like a mirror. The surface is kind of matte, and it isn't very reflective. The light is good, so it's easy to see what's on it. Or it would be, if there's anything on it. There's a piece of metal in there. Is this some kind of pin? There's obviously put here, so I'm guessing it's ported somehow. Hmm. Well, whatever it is, I can't get it out right now. I need to get that lid open. No, well, that's no good. Can't connect to anything. I need to go to another room first. Damn. Her handcuffs on the door. I can't open it. Hmm. There's a key on the handcuffs. Okay, so I'll need to keep her handcuffs. That's nice. I think Alice is investigating this room. Oh well, I don't think she'll mind if I go in. Sigma, what are you doing here? I just thought I'd come check up on you. No, oh, well, I haven't found anything interesting. The phone, it looks rather old. Look at the top there, it's got a place for a small cassette tape. I think the tape is actually for the answering machine part of the phone. That would make this phone decades old. Old fashioned phone, it's built an answering phone at you. I guess I can't do anything with that. Or unless... No, okay. Interesting. Hmm, I wonder what's in here. Well, keep wondering. It's locked. See? I told you so. There's a panel over here where you can put in the passcode. I can just get it to work. Enter a four-digit code, then press the enter key on the right. Well, let's give it a try. Do you have any ideas? Ideas for what? 
how to use this thing. Well, of course I do. Hm. You really think you're going to open it by just pressing random buttons? Well, I thought maybe I'd just get lucky. It doesn't work like that. There's no way you're going to get this thing open unless you know what to enter. Oh, skizzers, or... There's something on top of the desk. It's a little piece of metal. Interesting. Hey, there's some weird shapes in this room, too. What do you mean, too? Did he say something like this in the other rooms? Yeah. Just like this. Symbols on the wall, desk, everything. Really? What could they mean? I don't know, but I'm writing it down. Hmm... Damn, another one. What do you mean, another one? I saw one of these silhouettes earlier. It had a torn part too, although it was a different part. The area around the left forearm has been torn. Do you think that's a clue of some sort? Yeah, but I don't know what for yet. Um... Hmm... Okay, what's in the other room then? He should be checking this room out. I think I'll see how she's doing. No, oh, hello, Sigma. Find anything? Not really. No. That's nice. An old phone. Pretty gnarly. If we're talking old, who the hell says gnarly anymore? Shut it! Fine. Have you tried calling anywhere? Of course. I tried every number I could think of as soon as they found it. Didn't work. No. Which makes sense, I suppose. Why would someone trap us in here and then let us make phone calls to the outside world? I don't think it's connected to the actual phone grid. So it can only make inter internal calls is what you're saying. Mm hmm. Interesting. By the gods, I never thought I'd see one. Uh, what? You scratch off the silver part with the coin so you can see the naughty stuff. It's the ultimate interactive poster technology. What teenage boy doesn't dream of something like this? The excitement, the anticipation, and finally, the reveal. You look pretty excited. Can I use the metal thing? Of course, this chunk of metal ought to do it. Damn it. It's too slippery. I think I'm gonna need a coin to deal with that silver menace. Interesting. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Look, there's something on top of the desk. Yeah, it's a piece of metal. Kind of cylindrical. Small key. Okay. That's interesting. What? Have you seen this before? Yeah. Well, no, not this. But I've seen something similar patterns in the other rooms. They're all right next to a desk, too, just like this one. Have you figured it out yet? No, not yet. Oh. No well, time to write that one down, too. Hmm. Man, not again. Again? The silhouette. No, did you see one in another room? Yeah, I saw another one just like this. It had a hole torn around the ankle too. No, it had a hole, but it was somewhere else. Hmm. Still not sure what to do about that yet. Can I use... the key? Okay, still need an actual coin. Got it. Um... Damn it. It won't open. Yeah, looks like it's locked. I think that thing on the door can unlock it. We just need to figure out how. Mm -hmm. I'm still not really sure for this one. They all have holes! So true. I don't think plugging in random numbers is going to be very helpful. You need to get a clue. Clue, huh? Hmm... Okay, well... Let's 
Let's see if the key will work for the handcuffs. It did! Yes, goodbye handcuffs! Shouldn't have any more door problems now. And here we go. Um, there's a spot in it that would fit a small cassette tape. The tape is probably for the answering machine. Oh, the lid's open. Oh, is it? Hmm. Maybe I'll get a cassette later. Oh. I'm just gonna... That opened really easily. I guess it wasn't locked. More troll of aluminum foil? What am I gonna do with that? Uh... There's something on here. Box cutter? Can I use that with the large troll of aluminum? I can! Aluminum foil shapes? Interesting. Let's... I don't think this will do anything, but I might as well bring it down anyways. Can I use that up against this? Well, they've got those patterns here too, huh? On the wall next to the desk are 10 horizontal lines with what looks like a check mark in the middle. And can I use it with that? No? They probably do match up with the other four shapes, yeah, you're right, but... This is just like the other ones. It's ripped off too, but I'm in a different place this time. Okay, not really sure what to do with that yet, but I guess I'll move on from here for now. There are four shapes on the wall in front of the desk. What do they mean? Can you not? Desk, huh? Looks like the top's made of glass. Let's deal with this drawer. Then. There's a drawer? Alright, the aluminum foil's in place. Just gotta shut this. The images on the wall are reflected on the aluminum, which is acting as a mirror. Both images are overlaid. Looks like a circle, a star, a diamond, and a triangle. What does that mean? I don't know. Can I have the aluminum back, though? No? Okay. Mm -hmm. Still not really sure what to do with that, but... Still not really sure what to do with that, either. Um... Maybe the other ones had drawers too? Maybe I could check, see if there's anything inside. Oh, I have more aluminum? What the fuck? Wait, I didn't realize I had more aluminum. Probably pattern three. All right, the aluminum foil is in place. Just gotta shut this locker. Wow, that's helpful. The 
pattern on the worst pattern. The one, the two patterns are overlaid on one another. Looks like it says locker. Huh. That's really not helpful, man. Like, what about the locker? Mm hmm. Looker. Okay, well. Time to go to the other rooms, right? Sure, let's start with four. Okay, I get it. So it's just like, oh, these will give you the passcode you need for the lockers. <coughs> Something like that. Plus zero. Um, one plus three. I don't know what you're talking about, Relix, but um, six plus one for seven. That makes sense. Thank you, Peachy, for the help. Um, two just be two plus zero. Oh, good job. He opened it. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty great. Looks like there's something in there. Yes, check it out. Wallet. You probably shouldn't get your hopes up. Why not? Just a feeling. Yeah, fine, whatever. I'm not gonna let you bring me down. Let's see what's in here. Hope there's a coin. What the hell? What is it? There's only one coin in here. And it's not even really real money. Just a toy coin. See? Didn't I tell you? Damn. It's okay, we gotta look at the revealing clothing of the lady poster. Alright, you silvery bastard. Time to meet your doom. Let's do this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Damn, you're excited. Hey, don't misunderstand me. I'm just really anxious to find a clue in there, aren't you? You wanna let me do it, then? I'm sorry. Please just let me have this. Now get on with it. Search for hints on the poster. Click and drag across areas of interest to scratch them. Click the green triangle on the left to move your view up and down. Let's get started. I see. Wow, tits. Okay, um... Well, there's a star, so maybe it's the star and butterfly that's a point of interest. Star, butterfly... A short! Oops, I didn't mean to right-click. Let me back. Yeah, because I, I accidentally right-clicked. Uh, okay. Just gonna be messy about it because I don't care enough. Shark. Is the shark a clue? I'm not sure how, but shark. There isn't really anything to retry. Um. Okay. What am I missing? I think I'll need to do more than just scrape the silver part off. 
<sighs> okay. More than just scrape the silver part off. But do what else, though? I guess is the question. Because, like, clicking the points of interest doesn't seem to be doing anything. Make her bald? <laughs> I don't think I can, but I guess I could try. You know, I can't make her bald. Oh. I can scratch that- oh, I see. So there's other things that I can scratch off that are less intuitive. Oh wait, the star is six. Okay, I think I got the idea. I'm just gonna find a circle with the other info. Yeah, I can remove that. Aha! Okay, okay. Circle is one, so... What else? The tr triangle is nine. I see, this is clever. Band-aid? This, that. Diamond is eight. That's... that's cool. One, six, eight, nine. Imagine if you didn't get to write down those numbers. Oh, okay. Show them. Sigma, why are you wheezing? Why are you panting, Sigma? Down. It's just a poster. Damn. I look away for a second, you've scratched it all off. Yeah. I noticed some things that might be clues, so I kept going. You mean these marks on her arms and legs? Yeah. There are four of them. A star, a circle, a diamond, and a triangle. Hey, what are you doing? You've already scratched it all off. No, I'm not done yet. The blue part still needs to go. Sigma. I don't think that part's going to come off. No matter how hard you scrape. Okay. <laughs> oh dear. Anyways. Back to the first room we were in, I guess. Locked locker. I need to find a key. Oh, right. I need the key first. Fuck. Okay. At least have the one that I'm up before. Um, at least you know the passcode. He got no wonder he fell for Clover's bluff that one time. Honestly, yeah. He's, he's a little down bad, isn't he? One, four, nine, six plus three, eight, uh, six plus two, five, two plus three. Math. Ha! Piece of cake. Well, good job. That was pretty impressive. And there's something in there. Cassette tape. Okay, probably put that in the one that we can actually put the in. I think that was in the, um, room three. <laughs> Putting the cassette in now. All you have to do is close the lid. 
Alright, I put the tape in. Now what do I do? I want to hear what's on it. There's a small cassette tape inserted on the answering machine. I want to listen to the tape. Probably the only phone that I can pick up, I guess. Well, let me pick up that phone, so... Hmm. Where should I call next? Oh, I get it. This appears to be the internal line button. Maybe through connects to room 3. Might as well try pressing it. There is no phone number associated with this button. What? That's weird. Why can't I call room 3? just wouldn't do anything. And it's not like you can call yourself with only one phone. There's no harm in trying, right? Nope, nothing. Pressing the one button is probably pretty pointless. Yeah, this will connect down, so let's give it a shot. Who is this? No, hey Alice. So you are there. Sigma? Is that you? Yeah. Where are you calling from? Room 1. That's right next door. Why did you call me? You could just walk. Wait a minute. What's wrong? There's something on the display. It says 25 asterisk asterisk. 25 asterisk asterisk. 25 asterisk asterisk. Do you think it's a clue? Hmm. I'm gonna look around this room a little more. I'll see you later. Maybe the if it'll let me die. I don't think it will, but I'll try. Okay, never mind. Peachy, unless I ask for help, please refrain, okay? That is what I assumed too, but... I had to double check that it wasn't an option to enter into the other phone. this? Just me. Better than justice, I suppose. Really? You can do better than that. I'm hanging up. Come on, wait. What do you want? And where are you calling from? Room 1. Ah. I guess they have some kind of internal line. Seems like it. So what is it you- Huh? What's this? Uh- Agricola? Agricola 9-2? What the fuck is an Agricola?
I didn't know you were into German style board game farming simulations. Whoops, I meant asterisk asterisk thing too. Uh, okay, I think I know the thing to enter then. How on earth could you get those two mixed up? That's what it says on the phone's display. Hmm. Asterisk, asterisk, nine, two. Maybe it's a clue. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going back to searching this room. Call me if you find anything else. Two, five, nine, two. Ba 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 ba. Congratulations! That, that voice. It looks like you found the answer. The number you just entered is the number for the phone in the third room. The button's hair on the top of the phone are just shortcuts. That means all the other phones have actual numbers too. Though I guess that's not really important. Anyway, you're calling room three right now. Room three? Then that means... Since you're so clever, I'm sure you've figured it out by now. But yes, you're right. I'm speaking to you from a pre-recorded tape. So you can grasp me all the questions you like, but I won't be able to answer them. I'm afraid this little talk is going to be a bit one-sided. Then again, it's going to be a very little talk, because I only have one thing to tell you. Have a look at the left screen above the phone. The answer you're looking for is hidden there. What answer, you ask? Well, I can't help you with that one. Bye! Have a nice trace! Left. Ah, 2652. There we are. Alright, there's another four digit number. What am I supposed to do with this? I guess I need to enter it somewhere. So. If I had to guess, maybe here again, right? Because we know the code for the save. 2652. Let's see if these do anything. Aha! Hey, it opened! Some kind of pin there. Let's see. Yoink! I already got that pin thing, so I can close this lid, right? Ugh. Okay. Um, you. Can you take the pin? There's a key on top of the panel. I think a pin or something might fit in here. And it did! Huh? What was that noise? Maybe I can type stuff in now. Wee. Okay, so one, one plus zero, six, three plus three, eight, Six plus two, nine, three plus six. Oh. But it's one, six, eight, nine. One, six, eight, nine. Right? No? Maybe it's in the reverse order then, so nine, eight, One. Okay. Yes! It opened! Hi. No. This is just like the code we saw in the Ambidex room. This is the file password. It's not the escape password. I mean... It's a different code, of course, but it looks really similar. I think this probably opens a safe. There's a small device at the screen on a locker. The screen is flashing white. To view the password you found- yeah, no. Okay, um... Then... How do I find the escape password? Hmm. 
Yes. It opened. Man, what good is a victory dance when there's no one there to see it? I'm lonely. Oh well, I'll just have a look inside. But why would you want to escape? We can take a nap in this room. God damn it, Felix. I think this is the first time that I've been stumped on what to do for the escape password, though. Because normally it's easier to find the escape password than the safe password. Or the secret file password, rather. Hmm. There were a total of seven variety of chromatic doors in the nonary game facility, one for each of the following colors. Cyan, magenta, yellow, red, green, blue, and white. The primary chromatic doors will open at a specified time. Participants can see how much time is left until the primary doors open by pressing the buttons on both sides of their bracelets. Several conditions must be met by the group that enters the primary door in order for the secondary door to open. There must be two pair bracelets and one solo bracelet. The colors of all three bracelets must together form either the color of the door they are trying to enter, or its complementary color. That's kind of hard to remember though, so let's look at it like this instead. Red plus blue equals to open the magenta secondary door. Green plus green equals to open the magenta secondary door. Green plus red equals to open the yellow secondary door. Blue plus blue equals can open the yellow secondary door. Blue plus green equals can open the science secondary door. Red plus red equals can open the science secondary door. EU stands for erotic units. EU is a system developed to measure a combination of physical, emotional, and situation attractiveness. It ranges from 0 to 20, where 20 might be Marilyn Monroe, and 0 might be Gilbert Gottfried. For the curious, Denny Treasure rates to 16 EU. Just being sexy does not guarantee a high EU rating. Not to be confused with competing systems of hotness or sexability, the EU system weighs a number of factors such as practicality, sustainability, emotional investment, and the bias of the observer. Women with a high EU ranking could have usually mastered the art of the tease. Okay. Grandpa videos. A collection of films that Ted Miyoji has gathered. Their content isn't really explicit per se, but they still aren't really appropriate for someone Quark's age. It should be noted that the term does not imply the videos contain grandpas or grandpa-like actors. Sigma has a strange verbal and possibly psychological tick, which causes him to make cat puns whenever he talks about cats. The cause of this behavior seems to be an experience he had as a child. When Sigma was in preschool, there was a deserted house near his school that everybody called the Cat Mansion. He'd always loved cats, so every day he would visit the cat mansion and give the cats that lived there some of his lunch. One day, he realized that he could understand what the cats were saying to one another. <laughs> his a cat whisperer. A magical black cat appeared and told him that it had given him this gift in exchange for giving food to its fellows. But, the magical cat said, to be continued. You can never tell anyone about your gift, the magical cat warned. If you do, you'll be cursed. But young Sigma was so happy about his newfound ability that he slipped and told a girl about it. So the black cat cursed him. His curse was to speak only in cat puns for the rest of his life. Fortunately for him, a magical white cat came along soon after, felt the curse was a little too harsh and lessened it, so that he would only talk in cat puns when he talked about cats, and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> Wizard? Wizard's Ray <laughs> Um, yeah, phone. A device that converts sound to electrical signals and transmits them over a wire so they can be decoded and played back on the other end. It's useful for speaking to people who are far away. The invention of the telephone is generally credited to Alexander Graham Bell in 1876, but there's dispute in some circles as to whether or not this is the truth. In the game, there's a phone in one of the cabins. Can't call outside the facility, of course, but what if you try something like 5309 or 6969? Other numbers might do other things, so give it a try. Well, now I have to. Five three. Oops. Zero nine. Hello, can I help you? Hey, I got your number on the wall. Oh, huh? she hung up. 
Who's Jenny? Ready for the time of your life, sweetheart. Only twenty-four ninety-five a minute. Uh, that's a little too rich for my blood, thanks. <laughs> Amazing. Um... Okay, but, like, what do to escape, then? Um... Can I put another thing here? Huh? It's locked again. The input thing is turned off, too. Why did that happen? Okay, so there's probably another thing to put here. I'm not sure what, though. Hi. 3141. Oh, on the phone call? Or for this? Okay, that was wrong. What I was trying to do. Um. The first examples appeared sometime around 9500 BC, a time known as the Egyptian Neolithic period or the New Stone Age, when stone tools shaped by polishing or grinding were becoming common. Often they took the form of uh, gallets, with uh, honey concealed inside a wrapping created from ground oats, wheat, rye, or... Do you ever stop? Fascinating. Um... Hmm... I'm not really sure what to do for... <laughs> 46137.0 Uh... Exclamation mark three seven eight one six three seven seven one space five one space three four space four five zero six. What in the name of? Uh, I don't get it, but uh, fascinating. He was spitting math at us. I don't know. It's kind of funny. Um. Uh. Part of the bed has been ripped. I think it's supposed to indicate which part of the poster we scratch off. I see. Okay, well, um, I'm really not sure what else to put in the password, though. Because... I'm kind of stumped, to be honest. Spooky said try 1080. Nope. 1080 did nothing. Uh, zero, eight, one, eight. The grotesque sounds of ravenous groups of consumption. Vomiting. That's nice. Six, seven, two, four. Thank you for volunteering to join the Axis test group. Please indicate whether you prefer the mental or physical test battery. Warning, mental tests carry a small risk of death. Oh boy. 1148. Nothing. What if I just, like, I don't know, googled it at this rate? <laughs> 1986? I don't... I... I don't really get why that's the answer, but... I don't care. The color is different, though. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's the password. Gonna remember it. 
Note that the triangle and star are pointing down, but it's pointing up on the aluminum foil. The body parts of scratch can be found on the beds in each room, but the poster scratch is easy. Yeah, whatever. Uh, the symbols in room 1 go in the order circle, star, diamond, triangle, therefore the code is 1986. After remembering to turn the star's number and triangle number upside down, you try to match 1986 the way 0 the third mentioned becomes 9861. Uh, I don't get that. Whatever. Pretty sure we did all the easter egg numbers, fair enough. You see that that is the password, you're just looking for the reasoning. Ah. Uh, I mean, I don't get the reasoning, because, like, the circle, oh, uh, okay, I get it. Yeah, because the, it is an order, circle, star, diamond, triangle, but they're upside down, so that's why it's 1986. I think I tried it backwards for the... 9861. <laughs> Sooner than I realized I was supposed to flip the shapes. That's what happened. And because the symbols are flipped on the first you flipped it. Yeah. That's what happened. Wow. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, that's reference to a song called Jenny. That's what happened. Okay, yeah, we, it does seem like we tried all the um, Easter egg ones. You knew it would make sense eventually, yeah. We were just silly. We're just stupid. That's okay. We got there eventually, and that's what matters. <laughs> uh. Aha! Unlocking successful. wonder what's inside this time. Wait a minute. If I look through the stuff in here without telling females, they might get suspicious later. He took something when we weren't looking. Yeah, those two are bad sides that you really don't want to be on. I think I'll just go get them before I go through it. Well, that was easy enough. Well, yeah. Hey, what's this? Did you open this, Sigma? Yeah, who else could have? Why didn't you tell us sooner? What? Forget about it, Alice. Let's just see what's in there. What's this thing? A map. It says floor A. Hmm. We can look at it more later. And there's more stuff in the safe. Why don't we get all of it before we start going through it? Good idea. Looks like we've got a card. Make that two cards. This is one of those cards for the AB rooms. See? It says Ambidex room right there. So it does. Then we can use these to open the AB rooms. Yes. But... How are we supposed to get back there? The door to the warehouse is still locked. I think the answer to that question is in the safe. Check out this note. Fun virtues thing, the save codes are pulled from the pool of codes, so when the save file is initialized, you can't just memorize each code for each room. So speedrunners have to figure out to each room's puzzles, which some you can skip by just knowing the answer. Yeah, that makes sense. Here were a few more questions for you. Once you've opened a door, you can hop through it as much as you like. The chromatic doors are like that too. Once you open them, even I care not keep you from going in and out of them. Any color of breeze that can go through them, and as many people as you like. But, 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 you have to escape before you can take advantage of this free rain rule. Once you've activated a chromatic door and gone through it to the puzzle beyond, it won't let you go back until you've solved the puzzle. I see. So once we can get out of the crew quarters, we can head back to the warehouse, right? Yeah, seems like it. And this key is how we're gonna get out of here. Right. So this key will open the door at the end of the hallway. Let's go. Wait, what about this book on the top of the safe? Hmm? Oh, it's a book about cats. But do we have time for that, right, Meow? Meow? 
sorry. It's this sort of... I guess you could call it a tick. I have had it since I was young. I wish I was just kidding, but I can't control it. It's not dangerous, though. You're perfectly fine. Not dangerous. Um... Anyway, the book's called Schrodinger's Cat. Don't you mean Schrodinger's Cat? Oh, you heard of it? I think it'd be harder to find someone who hasn't heard of it. For real? Do you know what it is too, Alice? Of course I do. I was just wondering why this book was here. So what is Schrodinger's Cat? It's a quantum physics thought experiment. And the book probably discusses the principles the experiment talks about in more depth. See, Erwin Rudolf Joseph Alexander Schrodinger was a scholar of theoretical physics in Austria. He was born in 1887 and... Wait, is this going to be a long story? Yes. Thought so. How about we talk about it later, then? I mean, we just found the key that'll get us out of here. You do have a point there. Yes, he does. We should leave, now. Alright, let's go. Lock for the door. Right now it says lock. You guys ready? I'm gonna open the door. Okay. I'm ready. Go for it. Alright then. Three, two... One. We made our way down the hallway, and now that of waiting for us. Hey, looks like the gang's all here. What's up? Nothing's up. We left our room, and it left. And ended up here. Sigma, let me see that map you found earlier. Oh, right. No matter which door we took, all of them led back here. That's the same as the map we found in the lounge. In the lounge? Oh, we found something like that too! Our room was an infirmary. Not so. We found ours in the crew quarters. Huh. Maybe we should sit down for a bit and exchange information. No. There's plenty of time for that after we check out this elevator. Quarters, huh? Just as the note said, we had no trouble getting in here. That means we can go to the infirmary or the lounge? Yeah, we can check out any of them. Hey, look, Grandpa! They got a poster of a lady in here! It looks like the one you got back home! Hmm. This one's pretty hot. I'm thinking it's Emmy OG. I think we're talking at least 14, maybe even 15 EU. Is that why there's... Okay. Agreed. Goddamn. I sure would like to take it home with me. Unfortunately, I don't think this is really the time for that. Let's keep moving. Well, hold on. Grandpa? Since when were they buddies? Or have they always been that close? In other words, they'd known each other before the notary game. And if Kurok was calling Tamiyoji Grandpa, maybe they were even related. 
Alice and Clover seem to be close to. Just how many of these people knew each other already? Well, you see, Clover also knows Tenmyoji. Let's go, buddy. I can't wait to get out of here and back to my, uh, grandpa videos. Oh, you mean the ones you keep in the locked cabinet? Shh. Don't be too loud, Quark. You have to say these things quietly. Quark and myself each gave one card to Luna, Alice, and Tenmyoji. Then we headed into the AB rooms. There wasn't really any discussion about who'd go into which door. Luffy and I found ourselves heading toward the leftmost room. <laughs> it looks like everybody else has gone in already. Think we should head into? Why are you asking me? Just hurry up and get in there. Okay, okay. Gate 45. What? This game's got a time limit too? Wait. Something wrong? No, nothing. I just. There's no one here. What are you talking about? Of course there isn't anyone here. Well, yeah, I know. I just. Let's get inside. Yeah, yeah right. This looks just like the room we woke up in. Yeah. Uh, and there's one thing that's different. That screen. Yeah. It looks like there's something on it. Shit! What the hell are you doing, you idiot? What? I just pressed the start button. Did you even read what it said? No, it's illiterate. Once you press that button, it locks the door for 40 minutes. Now, thanks to your stupid ass, we're stuck in here for almost an hour. Oh, really? Yes, really. Ugh. Hey, hey, hey! Looks like everybody's closed. They're... That's the door to the AB room, silly. You're in the AB room right now. Excuse me. Uh... Now, let's get this party started. Let me. For example, Siggy and Fido paired up with Alas and went through. That means that Siggy and. And it goes Alas is a pawn, obviously. And B O N. Well, after all. May know how it works. Don't get it. Well, don't worry. Okay then. I think that about does it for the basic rule. Well, it'll just have to wait, I guess. What what does this have to be? Blah blah. No it won't. Thirty minutes remain. Anyway, I don't do something harebrained and wait until the last minute. You got plenty of time. So think it out. Bye bye now. Have a nice trust. Man. What are we gonna do? About the A B game? Yeah. Should we choose ally or betray? Yeah, it's a tough call. This is really kind of an interesting game. Seems like it's based on the prisoner's dilemma. What's that? You've never heard of it? He's stupid. Leave him alone. It's a thought experiment that uses game theory to examine why people do or don't cooperate. Let's say Apple and Banana have committed a serious crime. Apple and... Banana? I just gave them the first names I thought of. They're not names, but okay. They don't mean anything. They're fruits, but... Anyway, Apple and Banana are caught by the police and sent off to separate cells far away from one another. 
In other words, there's no way for them to contact each other. And they're not like telepaths or something. So that's the setup. You following me? Yeah, keep going. So, a detective shows up. He visits each cell and tells them both exactly the same thing. It goes something like this. You can both clam up if that's what you want. We gotta have to put you both in the slammer for two years if you do. Now, if you flip on your pal through there, tell me everything. I can get your sentence reduced to one year. That means your buddy will serve 15, but <laughs> that ain't your problem, right? Of course, if he decides to spill the beans, it goes the other way. He gets one year. You get to spend 15 years eating government cheese. You're probably wondering if both of you confess. Well, I can shave off a little time for saving me trouble, but you'll still both do 10 years. So, punk, what's it gonna be? You gonna give me what I want? Are you gonna keep that trap shut? Of course, I told your partner the same thing I just told you. I wonder if you can trust him to keep the cat in the bag. No rush. I'll give you plenty of time to think about it. So, that's the prisoner's dilemma? Yeah. What would you do? Say you were in apple or banana shoes. No. Mm. My erstwhile criminal associate banana is going to keep his mouth shut. And the best choice for me is to split the be spill the beans. That way I can only serve for one year. But what if he confesses too? Then the smart thing would be for me to do the same. After all, if he cuts a deal and I don't, then I'll spend 15 years in prison. If I confess, I can shave 5 years off of that. Then it seems like the best choice is always going to be confess. Interesting. But you're forgetting something important. Which is? That Banana will be thinking the same thing. So you'll both confess, and you'll both end up serving 10 years. Do you get it? If you both trusted each other, then neither of you would have served more than two years. But because you both made the decision based on your own self-interest, you're gonna spend eight more years in prison. In other words, the logical decision leads not only to a less desirable outcome on the group level, but also a pretty shitty situation on the personal level too. You see now? The A-B game is the prisoner's dilemma. Yeah, they are pretty much the same thing. If we trust Alice, we can both increase our BP by 2, but if we don't trust each other, in the long run, it won't benefit either of us. Hmm. Yeah, but this is where it gets interesting. Let's say for a moment all nine of us are on one team. Who would we be playing against? Zero, of course. Right. So we can assume the nine of us are fighting Zero in the AB game. If you look at it that way. What would we want to do to beat him? Question mark? <sighs> Just look at the point totals. Say we all picked ally. What would our total points be? Uh, well, 2 times 9 is 18, so... 18 points. Okay. Now let's say one of the pairs chooses Betray. The pair who picked Betray will get 3 points each, so in total they have 6 points. But the solo they betrayed will have 2 points subtracted, so... The total gain for that game would only be 4 points. The other two groups would still choose the ally for that round, right? Yeah. So for the other teams, you'll get 6 each, which will give you 2 times 6 is 12, plus 4, 16 points total. So, what does that tell you? If we consider all nine of us to be on the same team, we need to all always choose ally to get the most points. If even one person chooses betray, the total points we get goes down. Exactly. In this game, if each individual acts for the benefit of the whole group, everyone benefits. But, if everyone starts looking out for themselves, it'll impact the group negatively. And eventually, it'll impact them negatively, too. If all of us choose Betray, then the group gets zero points. Ultimately, nobody benefits. Not even the individual. In other words, selfish but logical decisions hurt everyone. And they hurt you. Okay. I think I got it. And what you're saying is that I should pick Ally. No. I mean the opposite. 
What? If you're going to make the most logical choice here, the only option is betray. What? Why? You just explained why that was a terrible idea. No, I didn't. It's not the prisoner's solution. It's the prisoner's dilemma. Even though there's an outcome where everybody's happy, the choice you'd have to make for that outcome isn't the rational one. You want to pick it, but you can't. A dilemma. If we choose Ally, and Alice does too, then yes, it'll be great. All three of us will get two points. That would be ideal, obviously. And it would help everybody. But... What if Alice chooses Betray? Our BP will go down to one. Right. And if that happens, we're screwed. So... 20 minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Unless we can be certain that Alice will choose Ally, we don't have a choice. We have to choose Betray. Unfortunately, we don't have any way to know that for certain. That means we have to make the rational choice. It would be great to make the right choice, but we can't. Hey. Did he just say we're screwed? If you don't mind telling me, what did you mean by that? I'm guessing something happens if our BP hits zero, right? I mean, the way you said it sure makes it seem like something's gonna happen. Do you know something? You do know something. What are you hiding? Yeah, you know, there's been something weird about you from the moment we met. I mean, for starters, how'd you know my name? Oh, knock it off. This is getting old. I don't care if it's getting ancient. This is important. I don't know you, but you seem to know me somehow. The only explanation I can think of is that makes any kind of sense is that you're working with Zero. What about you? What? Are you working with Zero? Me? Why would you think that? You're too calm. You wake up trapped in some kind of twisted game and it doesn't even phase you. That hardly seems normal. Oh, come on. I could ask you the same thing. Don't change the subject. We're talking about you. Maybe you actually do know me. What? Where the hell did that come from? Look, I already told you. I've never seen you. Before... in my... life. Um... Oh, is that bomb number three? Sigma. Just let it go. Our time's up. This is it. Before... well, before it ends, I wanted to tell you thanks. You know we're about to die, but you still stuck with me. So... Thank you, Sigma. Goodbye. Is the game giving us spoilers? God damn. What, what was that? What's wrong? I saw it. Saw what? The, the explosion. Explosion? I think there's a bomb somewhere in this building. I'm not sure, but it sounded like it was on a timer. You and I were trying to stop it, but we couldn't do anything, and... 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 Whoa! Sigma! Calm down! What are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, what is it now? My head. It hurts? Yeah. You know, you said it hurt when you first woke up in the AB room, too. It didn't just hurt. I felt like it was going to explode. Are you alright? I think so. Maybe you should rest a little. Yeah, maybe I could just lay my head on your lap. 
Of course. I shouldn't have worried. V and I spent the rest of the time until the door opened in silence. The AB game was forgotten as I tried to make sense of what I'd seen. Had it been real in any way? Or was it just a hallucination? Broken by stress or maybe some strange drug they dosed me with while I was out. Yeah, that seemed real though. Was it a premonition? I had to stifle a bark of laughter at the thought. You're seeing the future? <laughs> this isn't some crappy sci-fi novel. This is real life. It's like that didn't happen. I was just tired. The stress of the nunnery game was probably getting to me more than Fee thought. I was tired. I was emotional. The hallucination was strange, but really, it was perfectly understandable. But what if I wasn't losing it? What if I was fine? What if I hadn't been always blah, blah. What if it hadn't been a hallucination? I sat there for what felt like hours, my mind running in circles. Five minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All players, please enter your votes. If no vote is recorded before the deadline has passed, any non-voting parties will automatically ally. What the hell was that? What, do you need a translator? If you don't vote fast enough, then it'll set your vote to ally. Makes sense, or do I need to use smaller words? <laughs> so if you plan to pick ally, then you don't even really need to go into the AB room. I guess not. We're already in here, though. So, we might as well figure out what we're gonna do. What's it gonna be, Sigma? Ally? Or betray? Why are you even asking? You made it pretty clear that we should choose Betray. Well, I didn't say should. I just said we didn't really have a choice. That's the same thing. It's completely different. The former is an active opinion. The latter is just passive information. Whatever. You still want to Betray, right? Yeah. Then why did you ask me? So we never really finished our conversation from earlier. You said that we'd be screwed if our BP dropped to 1. What did you mean by that? Is something going to happen if our BP gets to 0 or something? We die. What? If our BP drops to 0, we die. The needles in our bracelets activate. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, how the hell do you know that? Zero never said anything about it. I don't know. I swear, I don't. I just... I know, somehow. There's just this feeling I've got. Like, that's what'll happen. Interesting. Oh, come on. That again? You fed me the same line when I asked you why you knew my name. How can you know all these things when there's no way on Earth? Wait, did you see it? What? Did you have some sort of, I don't know, premonition? What? What the hell are you talking about? You sounded like a crazy person the first time, too. Then you haven't. Seriously, Sigma, are you okay? I think there's something wrong with you. <laughs> this is wrong. V was supposed to be acting strange, not me. Instead, here she was asking if I was okay. What if it wasn't just her? What if I was losing it too? I groaned. My head felt awful. It was like someone had thrown my brain in a food processor and hit puree. One minute remains until Ambidex game polling closes. Hey, it's almost time. What are you gonna pick? If you aren't going to do it, then I... No, I'm fine. I'll do it. You're gonna choose Betray, right? Yeah. Don't worry about it. Alright. Take it away. 30 seconds remain until Ambidex game polling closes. 
I stood in front of the selection screen and took a deep breath. This was it. I ran over my options one last time. And there's only one possible choice. Ally. Round one of the Ambidex game has been completed. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Ambidex. I'm not missing any chats, am I? No. Okay. Gotta make sure sometimes. As Fee and I stepped out of the AB room, I could see the others running toward the projection, shoving and pushing to get closer. What the hell were you thinking? You know. Did you hear anything I said? I did. Yeah, I was, and yeah, I did. Then? Well, I... I want to believe in Alice. It's not really a rational decision. I know. Yo, what's up? Siggy! Kids doing over there. We're about to announce the results. Let's go. We'll find out if you made the right choice. All right. Good, good, good. <laughs> Looks like you're all here. Finally, let's get ready to rock. Ambedex round. The result. If everybody would please direct their on the monitor, yep. Betray ally. Ally, ally. Ally. Betray. Dio and Quirk allied. Wait, was Dio not lying when he said that Quirk was actually betraying? Hmm. Also interesting that Alice betrayed us, too. Here are the results from your game! Now, let us check the numbers on our bracelets. Hey, Alice. What the hell is this? Excuse me? I just made the most rational choice. The best way to minimize risk and maximize reward in this situation is to choose Betray. Anyone who thinks otherwise is, well... An idiot. Why? Why did you do it? I could ask you the same question. Why did you do something as stupid as choose ally? Why? Haven't you heard of the prisoner's dilemma? The best solution is for all of us to choose ally. Oh really? All of us, huh? Kay and Clover chose betray too, you know. Yes. I know about the prisoner's dilemma, but everyone picking ally isn't a reasonable outcome. Just look at the results for this round. What do they tell you? You're a pretty tender-hearted guy to trust somebody you've just met. Well, maybe tender-headed would be a little more appropriate in this case. Damn, Alice. Sheesh. What? Oh, was that upsetting? My apologies. I'm only trying to warn you. Alice is right. You made a stupid choice. And thanks to you, our BP is down to one now. God damn it. I set my jaw and stomped away from Alice and Fee. My hands had balled themselves into fists, but my throat was tight and my eyes stung. Why? Why had she done it? Quark, D1, Luna's group on the other hand, seemed calm. Almost happy. Thank you! I'm so happy you chose Ally! No problem. Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Dio wanted to pick Betray. What? Uh, hey! Mr. Dio told me to pick Betray so that we could get three points. He said we could escape together. If we betrayed you, then we'd have six BP. And then, if we betrayed someone in the next round, we'd have nine. Oh, Dio, is this true? No, th that's not what happened at all. Interesting, interesting. Kidding! Hmm. I lied. That was a joke. 
Mr. Dio would never do something like that. He would, though. That's the problem. It was a joke? Uh, yeah. Man, you, you really had me going there. <laughs> I really surprised you, huh? So you really were planning to choose Ally all along? Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't worry about it. We only did what anybody else would do. Right, Mr. Dio? Uh, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I understand. I guess I just haven't had enough time to earn your trust, huh? Um, I suppose you could say that. I just didn't really expect you to be so nice about it. It looks like there had been some sort of argument between Kay, Clover, and Tanmyoji. Although whatever it was seemed to have resolved itself amicably. It did change. I'm yellow now. So am I. Me too. Oh, we're paired with Luna, huh? Hmm. It looks like the color wasn't the only thing that changed. What do you mean? Well, it looks like our groups have changed too. I was a solo last round, but now it says pair. Wait, really? Mine still says solo. It looks like Luna and I both changed. Although I've gone from solo to pair. I'm the opposite. Mine went from pair to solo. No change here. Still a pair. I'm... I guess this must be... Magenta. <laughs> Are you colorblind, Dio? Are you two magenta too? Uh-huh. Yeah. Quark, Clover, and I are Cyan. I think Mr. K and I are pairs. And Miss Clover is a solo? Looks like it. Interesting. Oh. Hey, Sigma. Can I get you a seat? Are you some kind of waitress? What do you want? What do you mean, what do I want? I just came here to check up on you guys. So, this is the lounge, huh? The bar. Sofa. And three ladies. I feel like I'm in the VIP room. Can I get you a drink? <laughs> you better not be underage. I turned 21 just the other day. The reason why I'm pausing this because, like, Clover was like 18 in 999, and it's been established that the events of 999 was like a year ago. Um. What? I see. Well, I guess you could probably have a drink or two then. Unfortunately, as much fun as that sounds like, I don't think it's a very good idea. Why not? This isn't really a good time to be getting wasted. Really? It seems like this sort of thing is exactly what makes people want to drink in the first place. I mean, sure, but... Hmm... You got a point. Sigma? I'm just kidding. Besides, I've got a headache. Drinking is probably not the best plan. It hasn't gone away yet? Well, it was fine for a while, but now I guess the bastard's back. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm sure if I just leave it alone, it'll go away in a bit. That's how it went before, anyway. Has this been happening to anyone else? What? The headaches? Uh-huh. Now that you mention it, yeah, I did get one a bit ago. I feel fine now, though. What about you, Luna? Um, you know, I think I did have a bit of a headache earlier. Not me. No headaches here. Hmm. Well... Well what? It's hard to explain. I just feel kind of... weird. Your head feels weird? No. My body feels weird. Like my whole body. Do you feel kind of... numb? I think I've gotten the same thing. It's kind of like... Hmm. Like when you fall asleep on top of one of your arms. And then when you wake up, that arm kind of feels like it's not really yours anymore. It's not just my arm, though. My whole body feels kind of numb and foreign. Hmm. I don't know. I guess it's kind of like that, but... 
Oh, if that's what you're talking about, then yeah, I know what you mean. Really? It's kind of like my body isn't really mine. I'm sort of floating. Like that? Do you guys mean dissociating? Yeah, exactly. Maybe it's because of the anesthetic gas. The what now? It might have looked like white smoke. The stuff they used when they abducted you. Oh, uh, yeah, right. It seems like we were unconscious for a long time, so it must have been pretty powerful stuff. Do you think this might be some kind of side effect? Well, it could be a side effect, or it could be that it just hasn't worn off completely yet. Hmm. Whatever. That's not important. Right now we need to figure out how to get out of here. Alright. I'll go have a look somewhere else then. You guys going to stick around here? Yeah. I haven't really taken a good look at everything yet. Okay. Catch you later then. I wave goodbye and headed toward the exit. Where to next? I'm for Marie, and while that loads up, I'm gonna go get some water. Hey, Spooky, do you feel like dealing with a bug? Just out of curiosity. Uh, not especially. Okay, I guess I won't tell you about the roach in the kitchen then. So, is it edible? I mean, it's still alive, so... I don't know, man. I wouldn't recommend eating a roach. Especially if you're not a lizard. Hmm, so... This is an infirmary, huh? Oh, Sigma. Alice. What's up with your face? You look like you just saw a roach. I did just see a roach. What, what do you know? What a coincidence. <laughs> well, I guess I have to keep in the roach part in the YouTube video. <laughs> what are the odds? Are you still angry? Oh, fuck you, Alice. Of course. I'm teetering on the brink of the abyss thanks to you. People with self shellfish allergies shouldn't eat bugs because they have similar proteins to shellfish. Makes sense. I guess. Shellfish are sea bugs. Makes sense. I didn't have a choice. I'm just trying to get out of here like we all are. And that's enough to justify screwing someone else over? That's not what I meant, and you know it. If I'd known for sure that you were going to choose Ally, then I would have chosen Ally too. <laughs> Easy for you to say that now. What? Am I such a horrible person for wanting to get out of here? I mean, to be fair, Alice, in every other time, you have chose Ally for the first AB game, so... I have to get out of here. I know. There's so many things I still want to do. Like what? Well, let's see. I want to wear lots of gorgeous clothes. You say while not actively wearing a shirt. I want to eat tons of delicious food and fall in love. What an idiot. Excuse me? <laughs> and I was going to take your side, but after that load of horse shit, you're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Ugh. Look, let me try this again. I'm frustrated. In what way? But there really is something important I have to do. Okay. Which is? Avenge my father's murder. Interesting. I can't say I was expecting that. That's what I have to do. What happened to him? What happened to your old papa? Could you elaborate on that? No, I couldn't. Well, 
I tried. This isn't the kind of thing I should be telling people I don't even know. But you do know us. Well, at least, you know, tell me OG anyway. Fine. Just tell me one thing. Does your father's murder have anything to do with us being trapped here? I have no idea. Hmm. As to why you're here, your guess is as good as mine. But it's possible that his death is connected to my abduction. Hmm. Meaning? I was on their trail. I was tracking down the people who killed him. How close were you? I can't say. But it's possible that I was getting close enough that they decided something had to be done with me. Hmm. Are you a detective? Well, I wouldn't really say I'm a detective. Not a bad guess, though. Hmm. Why are you guys looking at me like that? I mean, you are being suspicious. Plus, you knew I saw a roach. That was weird. Well, I mean, you don't really have the detective look. With the lack of shirt and all that. I didn't say I was a detective. Touche. Then what are you? CIA? No. Fine, well, whatever you are, you don't look like one. That's fine. In my line of work, the less I look like what I am, the better. Fair. Better I keep them guessing. True. Hey. What's the deal with you and Clover? They're best friends. What's she got to do with anything? I mean, you obviously know each other, so there's that for one. Well, you know each other, right? I was thinking maybe you were related or worked together or something. There's a crumb in this package. I need it. No. Uh-huh. She has nothing to do with my work. Sure, she doesn't. She's just a friend that I met somewhere. Hmm. Where's somewhere? In the middle of a desert. <laughs> Normal places to meet friends. A desert? Yes. But that's an awfully long story. It's okay, I'm sure Tommy Oji has some things to say about it, too. Wait, hold on. Why am I the only person getting the third degree? That doesn't seem fair to me. How about you guys give up a little personal information, too? Well, Sigma was a college student. For whatever reason, there's a shot of him getting gassed by the view of his crotch. We'll start with you, Tenmi Oji. Who are you? Just a garbage collector. Are you, you- You can't just call Quark garbage, goddamn. Any ties to Zero? None. Hmm. What's your relationship with Quark? You two know each other, right? Grandpapa. Do I have to answer that? Yes. Well, if you really don't want to, it's not like I can force you. No. Oh. And I apologize, but I don't have anything to say about that subject. I mean, it's not like you told us everything either. I see. Very well, then. Dio, it's your turn. What's your profession? Well, you're probably gonna think I'm full of shit, but... I mean... I'm a circus ringleader. Wow, shocking with that outfit. I never would've guessed. A ringleader? You're kidding! Nope. I'm the real deal. Hmm. I lead a company of about 50 people. We travel all over the world. Interesting. It was my grandfather's grandfather who founded it, but my father died at a young age. I'm a fifth generation ringleader. Hmm. My old man was a trapeze artist. Mm hmm. He tried to do this quadruple flip and missed. Well, I guess he wasn't really young. He was about 40, still. He was pretty reckless for a guy that age. Always talking about how he couldn't let the kids show him up. Hmm. Guess he just took it too far. I see. 
You lost your father too then. Yeah. He's talking about the cold, but it's cleverly disguised as circus talk. Shit. Yeah. Guess I got a little sappy there. Perhaps. Anyway, point is, I don't have any damn idea how I'm connected to Zero. I got grabbed on the last night of one of our tour stops. Sure you were. You totally didn't sneak in here. I'd gone out to a couple bars and gotten shit-faced. On my way back to the caravan, this black van pulls up. Somebody grabs me and throws me inside. Before I can even get a look at him, they hit me with that gas and I'm out like a light. Next thing I know, I'm waking up in the AB room. Anyway, enough about me. We still haven't heard your story, Sigma. Who are you? And I told you guys the first time we met. And don't you remember? I was on my way home from school, and when I got into my car, this white gas started pouring out from everywhere. Are you some kind of doctor? Huh? No, I'm still working on my degree. I am shooting for a PhD, but I'm not quite there yet. I guess you've been working on that for quite a while, huh? Yeah, I guess I have. Can you think of anything that might connect you to any of this? I... I understand why Alice asked about if he's already a doctor. But I can't say anything because it's information I found out by accident. Um... Believe me, I've thought about it, but I just keep drawing a blank. What about Zero? No idea. Do any of the people here look familiar to you? Nope. They're all strangers. Well, I guess I can't really say for sure about Kay, since I haven't seen his face. I suppose it's possible to someone I know. I'm... I'm not convinced it's Kay just because he saw his face when he was in the middle of dying on Kay's body. I will throw that out there. Just who is he, anyway? Until then, Amnesia clears up. I don't think we've got any way of knowing. Oh, come on. You know he's full of shit. You still don't believe him? Of course not. Okay, well, K is a bit of a mystery, but... What about some of the others? Clover, for instance. What does she do? I think she's a student. Hmm. At night, she's a waitress or a bartender or something. Hmm. What about Quark? He's an actual child. Well, I guess he probably doesn't really have a job, huh? He's still in elementary school, right? <laughs> Why is that funny? It's nothing. Just forget about it. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Boy his age would be in elementary school. You really don't know much, do you? About Quark, I mean. And if it makes you feel better, I'm sure. Hmm. Well, I know a little about Luna. I got her talking when we were in the infirmary. She says she's got some sort of medical license or something. She's a nurse? It could mean she's a doctor. I don't know. She didn't say. Just going by how she looks, though, I'd guess nurse. Sexist. That leaves us with Phi. She's the most mysterious to me. What does a girl like that do? You've been around her the most, Sigma. She told you anything? Nope. Look, I just don't know, alright? It's just kind of... there. Like, I looked at you, and some part of my brain just said, That's Sigma. No, nothing in particular. You sure? Yeah. She's a real mystery, alright. I honestly know about as much as you do. So, basically nothing. I hadn't really realized it until I said it. I spent hours with Fi, and yet I knew nothing about her except her name. I only had her word that even that was the truth. Who was she really? The more I thought about it, the more suspicious she seemed. 
fake detective, a waitress, a garbage collector, an elementary school kid, a nurse, and a circus ringleader. Those two total mysteries. What do we all have in common? I don't think Zero would just grab a bunch of people randomly. There's no point to talking about this. We should just focus on getting out of here. Uh, I agree. I'm gonna go check on the others then. Where do you plan on going? Uh... I think I'll head to the crew quarters. I see. Right. Later, bro. Bro? Okay. I headed out of the infirmary. Fucking bro. Oh, Sigma. Okay. Perfect timing. Oh. You were in the crew quarters before, weren't you? Yes, and. Yeah, I was. B, Alice, and I went through all the rooms. Did you find anything suspicious? Nope. Like a secret door or something? Nope. If I had, you really think I wouldn't have told you? Anything else out of the ordinary, perhaps? A sexy poster, I guess. Out of the ordinary? Hmm. What's this book? It's about cats. Meow. Huh. Oh, that's a book of meow cats. A meow? Oh, sorry. It's just this thing that's happened to me ever since I was a kid. Whenever I start talking about cats, I start talking like one. It doesn't really mean anything, though. Okay. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. So what's the cat book about? Oh. Uh. Well, there's this quantum physics thought experiment called Schrodinger's cat. This book talks to me out it. Oh yes, I've heard about that. A cat is put in a box with a device that has a random chance to release a poison which will kill the cat. That means the cat is both alive and dead until someone opens the box. Something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Meow Beam? What? I don't really know anything of Meow Dip. I'm just telling you what he told me. So it probably isn't gonna give us any hints then. Mark? <laughs> You're doing it too. Yup. That's infectious. I'm afraid it's terminal too. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Well, what about you guys? What do you mean? You checked out the lounge with Clover and Tamioji, and Quark was in the infirmary with Dio and Luna. Anything suspicious there? Well, this whole facility is pretty suspicious, but... No shit, Sherlock. I suppose that's not what you meant. Nope. Well, the puzzles in the lounge were Lunar Eclipse themed. Lunar Eclipse? Yes. Apparently, there's supposed to be a lunar eclipse on December 31st, 2028. All the puzzles were related to that somehow. Hmm. Isn't that this New Year's Eve? I suppose it is. Well, I can't say I know what year, or even what day it is, but... Clover was saying something to that effect. The 31st, huh? I'd been knocked out at dawn on the 25th, so the 31st would be six days after that. Lunar Eclipse. Lunar Eclipse. What did it have to do with any of this? Try as I might, I couldn't think of any way an eclipse could be connected to her abductions. What about the infirmary, Quark? Did you find anything there? Yeah! We did find something! Just one thing, though. Hmm. What was it? Dio and Luna didn't tell you? No. Okay. I got it right here. Just a second.
Quark reached into his pocket and pulled out what appeared to be a newspaper clipping. I threw began to tighten as we read it. Radical 6, can I skip through it? No. Nope. Radical 6, infection spreads, cure contains to... Cure, hebra. Cure continues to elude authorities. The Radical 6 virus continues to spread across the globe like wildfire. The WHO has confirmed the death toll is estimated to have passed 100,000 victims. Immediate quarantine of any infected patients is strongly advised. Is this for real? It seems a little hard to believe. If it really is some kind of pandemic, though, that sounds like a pretty big deal. Yes, it does. There hasn't been anything on the news, though. This is the first time I've even heard of the term Radical Six. Was that true, though? Was that really the first time I had heard it? I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd heard Radical Six somewhere before, but where? Why? If it is true, then I worry about what might be happening to the world outside. Is there a pandemic raging on the other side of these walls? Clover's voice shouted the silence. You guys! Hurry! You need to come with me! Has something happened? Yes! I mean, sort of. I mean, we found something! Oh? What did you find? It's horrible! It's really scary! Horrible? Oh, never mind! Just shut up and follow me! You'll understand when you see it! Where is it? It's right over here in the next room! Just follow me! Clover was first into the room, followed quickly by me, Kay, and Quark. She said nothing, just pointed under the bed. The three of us crouched down and followed her finger. There it was. Oh. What, what the hell is this? I think it's a, a bomb. The bomb? N no way. So, thank you, Sigma. Goodbye. Of course. It was the same bomb I'd seen in my vision. Then it had it been a hallucination? Had it actually been a premonition? We need to tell everybody! No, it's alright. Luna's out rounding them up. They should be here in just a few seconds. <sighs> See? Where is it? Where's this bomb? No sooner had she spoken the words than the rest of our fellow ki that captives appeared. Nina pushed through them and pointed out the bomb. There. You see? For several long moments, we just stared in silence. Slowly, we began to eye one another. Old suspicion suddenly reawakened. It was he, he, bleh. it was Fee who finally broke the silence. Doesn't look like it has a timed detonator. There must be a remote somewhere. You're right. It'll probably use an active button or a switch of some sort, not a dead man switch. If we can get it, we should be safe as long as we don't press the button. Hmm. Who was the first person to find this? Me! And... and Luna. We found it while we were searching this room. I thought you and Luna were in the lounge. Well, yeah. We looked all over, but we couldn't find anything there. So we gave up on the lounge and came here. I can confirm that. I wanted to look around the lounge some more, so I stayed back. You guys must have found it when you got here, then? Yes. How did you know it was a bomb? Well, I mean, I could tell just by looking at it. Why? Well, during my train... Clover! 
Clover's eyes widened, and uh, she clapped her hands over her mouth. Anyway, this is definitely a bomb. I guarantee it. How do you know? I just do, okay? You sounded pretty sure about the switch, too. How do you know all this? Let's just say it's an occupational hazard. What kind of occupation do you have? I can't tell you that. Spare me the bullshit. This isn't time for keeping secrets. Please. Just trust me. Look, I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm sure that's a bomb. And it's not just any kind of bomb. It's an antimatter bomb. Antimatter? All right, then. What? Wait, you mean a bomb that uses annihilation energy? Oh, you know what that is? Anyway, yes, you're right. Uh, what's Annie Hill Nation? <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought you'd know. Huh? Why? Well, your name is Quark. You do know what that means, right? Yeah. Grandpa told me about it. He said it's an elementary particle, one of the smallest bits of matter, but I don't really know anything else. <laughs> Fair. I see. He is just a kid. Can you explain it to him, Tenmyoji? Me? Well, you know him best. I thought you could explain it best. Uh, let me think. Um, I don't know. It's hard to think of a way to explain it in simple terms. You want me to do it? Yes, please. V nodded and turned to Quark. Okay. To begin with, we usually refer to bits of matter as particles. But there are also these things called antiparticles. For example, an electron is a particle with a negative charge. It has a sort of opposite, which is the antiparticle called the positron. It has a positive charge instead of a negative one, like the electron. So, protons have antiprotons, and neutrons have antineutrons. Antimatter is a general term that covers all the antiparticles. The thing that's interesting about antimatter is that because it's the opposite of normal matter, when they collide, they both sort of cancel each other out. When they cancel each other out, though, it releases a whole bunch of energy. That process is called annihilation. So, an antimatter bomb is a bomb that uses annihilation energy. Yeah, I was gonna be like, okay, that explanation made sense to me, but if I was Quark's age, I'm not sure I would get it. Oh. Alright, how about this? You've got men and women, right? They're kind of like, complete opposites? <laughs> what happens when you put them together? Um... You make babies? Well, if there were, uh, quantum men and women, then, when you put them together, they disappear. Because their opposite elements cancel each other out. Like when a plus cancels out a minus, you get zero. That's annihilation. But when you get annihilation, you also get... I know! A baby! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. In this case, the baby you get is the energy from the annihilation. It's not a real baby, of course, but... Like a baby, it's got all sorts of potential to do amazing things. <laughs> Weird way to start the birds and the bees talk, but pop off queen, so true. That's kind of a strange explanation. You followed it though, right? Yeah! Yeah, but that thing under the bed isn't going to be making a baby. Just how big of a... Uh, just how big of an explosion are we going to get here? It's pretty simple, actually. Just use Einstein's E equals MC squared. The mass lost during annihilation will be converted to energy, so... So you would take the total mass of matter and antimatter and multiply it by the speed of light squared. That should get you the amount of energy. For example, let's say that it has 350 milligrams of antimatter. That would mean there would also be 350 milligrams of matter, right? So you'd have 700 milligrams total. Yes. That means annihilation would produce roughly 63 trillion joules. And why are they just so good at doing casual math like that? Like, hello? 63 trillion joules? That's about as much energy as the Hiroshima bomb. That's nice. 
Hiroshima, though. What the? You've got to be kidding me. But there's only 350 milligrams of stuff in there. Well, technically, it's 700 milligrams since you have the matter and the antimatter. That's not the point! We're talking about something that weighs less than a gram being equal to a bomb that weighed like 10,000 pounds! Yeah. Don't get so excited. I think I know what kind of bomb this is. It's probably using antihydrogen. There should only be about 25 micrograms of material in there. That's less than a thousandth of a gram. So you'd only get about 45 billion joules of energy, right? Only 45 billion, you know. What does that mean? About as much explosive power as one ton of TNT. A ton? Yes. Well, approximately. And how exactly should I not worry about that? That's enough to blow up a 10-story building! True. But it's a lot less powerful than an atomic bomb. I mean, sure, but... We don't know how big this place is. If we can get far enough away from the bomb, we might have a chance of survival. Perhaps, but how do we know this is the only bomb? What do you mean? Look at it carefully. It has the number three on it. It's got a number three. Do you see it? Yeah, you're right. If the bombs are numbered... Then there could be a number two bomb or a number one bomb out there, huh? There's definitely a number one bomb that we are aware of. Yes. There's no way to know if this is the final bomb either. There could be a fourth, or a fifth, or... Anyway, we can't just sit here and do nothing. We should move it. Somewhere. I'm not sure about that, but... Dia stepped forward and reached for the bomb. No! Don't touch it! Alice grabbed Dio by the wrist and jerked him away from the bed. What the hell do you think you're doing? Have you got a death wish or something? This bomb is here because somebody planted it. Do you really think they didn't rig it to go off if some idiot tried to move it? Well, then what the fuck are we supposed to do? Disarm it. We'll just have to leave it be for now. What about disarming it? Until we can find the detonator or figure out how to turn it off. Then you're telling us we should just prance off and ignore the incredibly deadly bomb that is probably going to kill us all? There's not much else we can do. Do you know how to turn it off? Well, there is a way. Is there a place to put a password? Because I can have I have a th couple I can try. Then spill the beans, lady. How do we turn the damn thing off? There should be an emergency deactivation password. Aha. Uh -huh. If you enter that password, the device should, well, deactivate. So we just need to get this password? Yes, that's right. But there's no keyboard or anything on the bomb. Look again. You see it? Right here. There's a port. If we can find the password input device, we just connect it here. Then we can enter the password. Who would do something like this? Yeah, Dio. I have no idea. But we can figure out when they did it. Oh yeah? When you and I searched this room, we didn't find anything, right? So that means the bomb must have been planted after we'd left. After we left, huh? But when we went and checked the chromatic doors, we were all there. And after that, we've all been around other people. There's no way anyone could have snuck off to plan it. I don't know about that. After we finished the AB game, we all split up. But if someone planted it right before then... What do you mean? Oh, yeah! You don't know, do you? Before we went off to the three rooms, we searched the hallway. Everybody was all split up. <laughs> yeah. Anyone could have come by here then. It would have been easy to sneak away. You know, I don't remember seeing you around, Sigma. Wow. What were you doing? Ha. <laughs> well, I was... Uh... I was just kind of deep in thought, I guess. We stayed behind in the warehouse when you guys went off.
Hey, why are you guys giving me that look? You don't think I pointed it to you? I never said that. Not that loud, you didn't. You gotta be kidding me. I don't know anything about this bomb. Really? Are you sure? I mean, I have a hunch as to what the, the activation password is, but that has nothing to do with this. Back when we were in the AB room, you said you saw the moment when the bomb exploded. Th that was, um, just, uh... I could hardly say premonition. If they didn't think it was the worst lie on the planet, then they think I was insane. Wait, 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 wait. This doesn't make any sense. According to Tamiyoji, any one of us could have been in here. Why am I the only one who's under suspicion? Also, also, there's no way to know the culprit here is actually one of us. Maybe there's someone else in here, and they set up the... Impossible. Why? There's no way that would get past Zero. And there's no way Zero would let anybody do something that would get in the way of the game going forward. Um... What? When you say Zero, you mean the AI, right? Of course. This is confusing. From now on, let's refer to the real Zero, the one behind all of this, as Zero Senior. Which would, of course, make the AI Zero Junior. Okay. Fine with me. Anyway, whichever one it is, they're not going to let a tenth person in. There's no way. But what if the tenth person is your senior? I don't think it could be. Why not? Well, Zero Junior said so. He said that the real Zero was one of us. Fee and Clover were right. There couldn't be a tenth guest. And Zero Senior was, without a doubt, one of us. But if that was the case, then could Zero Senior have planted the bomb? If not, then who had? Alice? Theo? Luna? Kay? Clover? Tenmyoji? Fi? Or... It seemed insane, but could it have been Quark? Why would Zero Senior have gone to all the trouble of setting a bomb? To make this game more exciting? To make it more dangerous? No. I didn't fit at all. But if that was the case, then the person who planted the bomb was someone other than Zero Senior. Oh no! This is bad! What is it? Press the buttons on your bracelet! Aw oh, shit. Is this for real? We've only got four minutes until the chromatic doors open! Let's go then. You're right. This bomb thing is gonna have to wait until later. Alright, come on everyone. Chromatic doors have opened. Five minutes remain until... The doors have opened. We need to figure out who's going where and fast. Um, so are our options this time, or, uh... We don't have time to wait for you to figure it out. Just pay attention. I'm only gonna say this once. We laid out our options. Option A. Luna and I, Hilo, pair up with Clover, Cyan, to open the green door. Then Miyoji and Dio, Magenta, pair up with Alice, Yellow, to open the red door. K and Quark, Cyan, pair up with Fee, Magenta, to open the blue door. Option B. 
Luna and I, yellow, pair up with Fee, magenta, to open the red door. Temioji and Dio, magenta, pair up with Clover, cyan, to open the blue door. K and Quark, cyan, pair up with Alice, yellow, to open the green door. Option C, Luna and I, yellow, pair up with Alice, yellow, to open the blue door. Temioji and Dio, magenta, pair up with Fee, magenta, and open the green door. K and Quark, cyan, pair up with Clover, cyan, to open the red door. Three minutes remain until chromatic doors close. Okay, how are we gonna do this? We need a system here or we'll never have time to argue it out. Why don't we let the people who are at the most disadvantage right now decide? The most what? The people who only have one BP. Oh, so that would be me, you and Tommy Ochi. No way! I refuse! Well, then what would you suggest? We'll be fair and take a vote. A vote? So we all just, like, raise our hands for the option we want? Exactly. So which one do you want, Alice? Option C. I want to go with Sigma and Luna. Why? So you betray me again? It's tough. Pick something else. My, my. Looks like you're not so fond of me anymore. Do you agree with him, Luna? I'll just let Sigma decide. Fine. I'd like option C, too. Clover and I were a pair for the first round, so I feel that I can trust her. What about you, Quark? That's fine with me. So that's three votes for option C, counting mine. How about the rest of you? I'd like to pair up with Sigma and Luna, too. So option B, then. I like to go with Fee. You good with that, Luna? I'm um, sure. I really don't mind. So we've got three votes for option B. I'd like to go with option A. You want to pair up with Alice? You're a strange duck. Hmm. How about you, Tenmyoji? I don't mind going with option A. One minute remains until chromatic doors close. So, two votes for A and three votes for B and C. If Clover's vote doesn't decide this thing, we're gonna have to figure something else out. Which one do you want, Clover? I... um... I wanna go with option C. Clark chose Ally in the first round, and I was with K in the first round. Then that's what we're doing. Option C had won four votes. We were almost out of time, and I didn't exactly have a convincing argument. I was going to have to go with the majority. Ten seconds remain until chromatic doors close. Nine, eight, seven. The doors are closing. Let's go. Come on, Luna. Hurry up. We gotta get the the blah 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 blah. We gotta get to the blue door. Right. Luna, Alice, and I dashed toward the blue door. I looked over my shoulder in time to see the others disappearing into their doors. Glover, Quark, and Kay had it up with the red door, and Fia, Dio, and Tamiyoji had gone to the green door. Two, one, zero. Chromatic doors closing. There's three doors here. It looks like they're all locked, though. Does that mean this is just a dead end? Well, there's a weird lever thing over here. Try pulling it. How about you try pulling it? Hey, what's with all this hostility? Are you still mad about the last AB game? Yes. Of course I am. Please don't fight. We need to work together, or we're really going to be in trouble. Please. Hmm. Very well. I'll pull the lever then. Is that okay? Yeah, go right ahead. See if I care. Well then. Okay, we gotta go to the garden. Fuck yeah. 
been curious about the garden since I learned it existed. One of the doors opened. But only one. I wonder how you open the other ones. Who cares? We should get moving. Gordine. Ooh. Mushroom. What is this place? Don't tell me we somehow managed to get outside. I doubt it. Look up. There's a ceiling up there. Yeah. I remember the door said bee garden or something. What's a bee garden? It probably stands for something. Or maybe beautiful? I was thinking botanical, but I feel like that's redundant. Huh. This feels like a whole other little world. I'm like an oasis in the middle of all this metal. I feel kind of weird saying this, considering where we are, but... This place feels so... liberating. Fair. All of this green. It's Bottom wonderful. garden. I mean, maybe. It's huge, though. We'll wear ourselves ragged trying to search the whole thing. This must be the accident. Damn. Well, so much for this being easy. It's locked. We should split up and look around. Agreed. Well, let's get to it then. Bountiful garden? Maybe. Oh my god, there's an arrow to move. Okay, anyways. That will do it for tonight. Um, so we'll end here. We'll mess with the garden next time. Um. Next time we actually might go on for longer because, um, uh, I don't, I won't have school the next day, but we'll see. You thought basement garden, but you don't know. You don't think they're in the basement? I don't think they're in the basement either because, like, B floor stands for bottom floor as far as I'm aware. Bland garden? Well, it didn't look bland, but I guess it was mostly grass. Um, but anyways, this time was interesting. We definitely learned a lot of stuff. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. Um, um, that was interesting, though. I'm not sure if I have any following thoughts. I might have more tangible thoughts next time. We'll see. But it was interesting. Do you guys have any thoughts you'd like to share with the class while I figure out who I'd like to read? Until then, though. Bye-bye, everyone! Uh. <coughs> uh, awful. Okay. Bye! <laughs>